the SPS-37 radar antenna is lost due to the failure of the lower plate section of the pancake aluminum casting, a part of the pedestal. The SPS-30 is tested to destruction in order to obtain comprehensive loading information. The reinforced pedestal of the SPS-43A antenna holds under the 10 PSI overpressure and the array survives without damage. The drums going over the side are the SPG-55 Terrier Guided Missile Dummy Directors. There is some damage to the ASROC launcher, but launcher operation is not impaired. There is no visible damage to the Mark 44 rockets loaded in the launcher. In the electronics installation on the forward Mac, the URD4 radio direction finder and the SPS-10 are carried away due to bulk failures. The base structure of the SPS-42 is severely deformed. The blast side of the hardened deck house. Some longitudinal plating stiffeners sustain a two inch permanent deflection. There is no damage to electronics equipment in the CIC room. Observe the horizontal motion of the equipment. The after end covers of the Mark 32 torpedo tubes are blown off the port and starboard tube. The Mark 44 and 46 torpedoes stowed in the tubes show no indication of damage. The dished skin of the blast hardened deck house. The fiberglass deck house in the foreground is essentially undamaged. In the background, the tripod mast falls from the aftermath. The Mark 25 torpedo tube is severely damaged. The aluminum casting cracked at the foundation. Hold down bolts elongated. The insulating blanket destroyed and the muzzle door sprung. Despite the damage, the tube remains operational. Looking forward at the aftermath, the tripod mast carrying the electronics gear is destroyed and falls to the deck.
Instruments detect some movement of the stowed missiles, but there is no observable damage. This SPG-51 charter guided missile radar suffers no major damage, but minor failures put the equipment out of operation for one hour. Virtually the entire starboard side of the standard DLG-16 deckhouse between the O2 and O4 levels is blown in under 10 PSI overpressure. Failure appears to have been caused by rupture of the deck level welds of the vertical web frame. Another compartment of the standard DLG-16 deckhouse on the O2 level. The simulated bridge on the O3 level in the DLG-16 deckhouse. The significance of Operation Sailor Hat is summarized by Mr. J. Armstrong, Bureau of Ships, U.S. Navy, Technical Director of the Operation. Shock Delta concluded the airborne portion of Operation Sailor Hat. In addition to the projects directly associated with the ship evaluation program, various other projects were supported. These dealt with seismological effects, underwater acoustics, radio communications, cratering phenomena, free field air blast measurements, fireball generation, cloud growth, and electromagnetic effects. Data obtained from the ship evaluation program indicate that the goal of greater ship protection can be met without imposing unacceptable weight and cost factors or sacrificing operational requirements. For example, Sailor Hat tests determined that although some radar antennas were incapacitated by blast, no new concept of antenna design is required. However, ruggedization of these items is required and can be accomplished by a planned and progressive blast hardening program. Analysis of all test data will result in better damage range and standoff predictions as well as a more vivid appreciation of the effects of enemy weapons. Future analysis of Sailor Hat test data will provide design and specification information that is necessary to construct ships which will have a greater survivability in combat. <laughs>